Who can say no? <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Hello and good morning. I'm Josh with the Arizona Science Center, and I'm so grateful to be here with all of you this morning for one of our early learning live sessions. And I'm going to talk for a little bit just to give you folks a few more seconds. But if you're here already, thank you so much for being so prompt or getting here so quickly. Uh, let us know in the comments below where you're from. We'd love to see where all of you are joining us and who are young friends, right? We have Sam age three, anything you're willing to share. We are so grateful to have you all. Again, my name is Josh and I'm here with the Arizona Science Center as part of today's early learning live session at 930. And if you are interested in more videos or more topics, you can always see all of our do it yourself at home resources, all of our fun activities and demos on our Facebook page, on our Instagram, on our Twitter, or at our YouTube channel, which will have all of the videos from our Facebook live demos. Hello, Sir James. Uh, <laughs> this is my cat, Sir James Fitz James, in case you're wondering. Uh, or you can always find all of our resources at azscience.com. So dot org, excuse me. You can find all of our resources at azscience.org. So again, my name is Josh and my friends, guess what? This morning, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite things in the entire world, <laughs> other than Sir James. Uh, but we are going to be talking about robots. So we are going to have a quick story and then we are going to show you an activity that you can do yourself just to practice your very own coding skills at home. Are you ready to get started? Awesome. So today's story is how to Code a Sandcastle by, jo by Josh Funk, illustrated by Sarah Palacios. How to Code a Sandcastle. Hello world, I'm Pearl. It's the last day of summer vacation, which means that today is my very last chance to build a sandcastle. I've tried every single day, but something always ruins it, right? Here's Pearl. First came the flying saucers. Do you all see the flying saucer? Do you think that's actually a flying saucer or do you think that's something else? Then came the shark attack. Oh no, do you all see this giant shark attacking her poor sandcastle? Do you think that is a real shark or do you think that is something else? And oh no, maybe worst of all was the moat that Ada Huglace added. Oh no, do you see the moat that this dog is adding to our sandcastle? Oh no, it's our very last chance. Do you think she'll be able to build the sandcastle on today, the last day of summer? I certainly hope so. Let's find out. Hmm. But today, I've got the perfect plan. I brought my trusty rust-proof robot, Pascal. Say hello to the world, Pascal. Hello, world. He'll do whatever I tell him, as long as I tell him in code. It's not a secret code. It's, a, it's special instructions that computers understand. So we have Pearl, and she tells Pascal, now, build a sandcastle, Pascal. And Pascal is thinking, and Pascal is thinking, and Pascal is still just thinking, hmm, I guess he doesn't know how to do that. But a coder takes one big problem and breaks it into several smaller ones. If I give Pascal enough instructions that he does know, we'll build this castle in no time. It'll be easy. Do you think Pearl and Pascal are going to be able to build a sandcastle? Mm, let's find out. Mm, so we're taking one big problem of how to build a sandcastle and we're breaking it down into several small problems that are easier to solve. Small problem number one. We need to find a place to build. Pearl says, Pascal, find a flat spot away from all the dogs and frisbees. So Pascal goes there. Where is Pascal? 
is he in a flat spot away from dogs and fishes? Yeah. Does that work? No, not for a sandcastle. So Pearl says, no, Pascal, we need to be on land. And then where does Pascal go? He goes all the way to the parking lot. Is the parking lot going to be good for a sandcastle? No, that's too far. Hmm. I guess I need to be very specific with my instructions. When you are very specific, you give a lot of detail about what you're trying to accomplish. So Pearl says, Pascal, find a flat spot on sand that isn't too close to the water. So Pascal goes here. Did he find a flat spot on sand that isn't too close to the water? Yeah. Does this look like a good place for a sandcastle? I agree. I think this is a great place for a sandcastle. You all are so good at this. Hmm. This isn't as easy as I thought, but at least we have a place to build. Small problem number two. We need to gather up sand. Now we'll need a humongous pile of sand. It's very important to tell Pascal everything in the correct sequence. The correct sequence just means that it needs to go in the right order. So to gather up sand, first, fill the pail with sand. We have Pascal with his shovel in his bucket. Two, dump the sand on our spot. And three, pat the sand down. Pat, 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 pat. That's how we're gonna get the sand for our sand castle. Great job, Pascal. Now let's do it again. So we fill the pail with sand. We dump the sand on our spot and we pat the sand down. Fill the pail, dump the sand, pat it down. Fill the pail, dump the sand, pat it down. And again, fill, dump, pat. This is getting so boring. There must be a trick I can use. I can use a loop. When you need to repeat something in code, you can use a loop. Pascal, loop through the sequence. For those of you at home, a loop is a fancy way of saying just repeat it. So we have our loop down here. We fill the pail with sand, goes to two, dump the sand on our spot, and three, pat the sand down, and then it goes in a circle, and our loop goes around and around and around. So we have fill, dump, pat, fill, dump, pat, and so on and so forth. And the loop keeps repeating, loops keep repeating, repeating, words are hard. And Pearl says, this might take a while. I'm gonna relax while you work. So Pearl takes a nap. And as Pearl continues to nap, we can see that our loop is still going on. Fill the pail, dump the sand, pat it down. Fill the pail, dump the sand, pat it down. And when Pearl wakes up, what do you all notice? Did the loop do its job? Did Pascal get all the sand he needed for the sand castle? You think he maybe got too much sand? I think so too. Pearl says, uh oh, I think that's big enough. Time for a break, Pascal. But we've succeeded in clear problem number two. We have our sand for our sand castle and we have it in the correct spot. So we are on to small problem number three. We need to shape and decorate the castle. So Pearl is looking around and she says, let's each find some fancy decorations and bring them back here. Pearl shows up here and she goes, I've got some seashells. What do you have, Pascal? What did Pascal bring? He brought the entire lifeguard on the lifeguard stand. That's really, really big. Do you think that's a good decoration for a sandcastle? I don't think so either. That's way too big. You need to find something smaller. So Pascal brings something smaller, but what does he bring something this time? That's right, he brings a live crab. Uh, we need something that isn't moving, right? A crab is not a very good decoration. Pascal, that's not ours. Oh no, what did Pascal find this time? He took a baby's pacifier, right? He took a baby's binky. That's not very nice. You can see the poor baby crying. But don't worry, we'll give it back. 
no babies were upset by this book, I promise. Okay. Hmm. Maybe I need to give him better instruction. Pearl is thinking on how to code Pascal better. And if, then, else should do the trick. If the item you see is small and doesn't move and doesn't belong to anyone, no stealing binkies, then bring the item back to the castle. Else, find something different. Perfect. Let's shape and decorate the castle. So we have everyone working nicely and building up a team, building up the castle as a team. And we have Pearl working on it. And we have Pearl putting her flag and Pascal putting those pretty seashells that we found for decoration. Now our castle is finally finished. Wait here, I'll get back with some toys. Do we have a beautiful sand castle? Was Pearl able to make her sand castle for the very last day of summer? Yeah. Do you think that is a great sandcastle? I think so too. But now that she disappears for some toys, what do you all think is going to happen? Let's find out. Oh no, what's happening? We've got the water coming in and Pearl comes running back. Are you ready to play? Oh no, what happened? Of course. It's high tide, right? The ocean changed and it came high tide and it ruined the sand castle and our castle, it's all gone. Then we have Ada Puglace comes back. We have poor Pearl. Oh no, Pearl's really upset. She says, go ahead, pee. You can't make a moat today. Pearl says, wait, a moat? Mm, it looks like she's got an idea. Do you all want to find out what her idea is? I do too. A moat would have protected the castle from the tide. If only I had thought of a moat earlier. It took half the day to figure out how to code a sandcastle. But hold on. I already wrote the code to build a sandcastle. I can easily use all of that code again. Code one, find a place to build. Pascal is finding a place to build on the beach, not too close to the water. Two, gather up the sand. And we see Pascal going through his loop. Then three, shape and decorate the castle. And Pascal is furiously shaping and finds some beautiful decorations for the castle. But we're not done. We've got a new problem. Ooh, let's find out what is our new problem. Small problem number four. We need to build a moat. I think a new sequence should solve this small problem. And I know how to write one of those. Again, what does a sequence mean? Good. A sequence just means that we're putting codes in the correct order. Good job, everyone. Okay. Code one, dig around the outside of the castle. Code two, fill the pail with sand. And three, empty the pail away from the castle. And we need to repeat that until we've gone all the way around the castle. I know, another loop. So dig around the outside of the castle, Fill the pail with sand. Empty the pail away from the castle. That's enough, Pascal. So she remembered to actually watch Pascal this time instead of taking a nap. I think that was a very good idea on Pearl's part. And hooray! Our sand castle is finished and safe from the ocean. Let's play. Good. Hey, Pascal. Now that we know how to code one sand castle, dot, 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 Mm. Now that she knows how to code one sandcastle, what do you think she's going to do on the very next page? We can code an entire kingdom! Do you see all the sandcastles? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sandcastles. And that, my friends, is a very excellent sand kingdom. the end. So thank you all so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed today's story as much as I did, but the coding fun doesn't stop there. Now we actually have an activity that you all can practice at home. So this game is called Hungry Robot. And since if we look around, you may see part of my living room. You may see my cat who is popping in and out of videos, but you are not likely to see a robot. 
So I'm going to be the robot and my roommate Natalie, who's behind the camera, is now going to code me. So the important part for coding is one, we have a goal, right? The goal for Pearl and Pascal was their goal was to build a sandcastle and then an entire sand kingdom, which I think was pretty cool. My goal today is Natalie is going to code me to give me to get me outside of our apartment and get me outside of the front door. So she needs to code me to give directions outside the apartment. When we are talking about coding, all we're really doing is giving clear and specific, meaning really, really detailed instructions to get me from my seat on the couch out the front door. Are you all ready? Awesome. Let's see how this goes. I'm now a robot. Miss Natalie, it is your turn. Josh, stand up. Josh, turn 90 degrees to your right. 90 degrees basically makes the shape of my arms. This is to my right. Josh, point to your nose. Josh, walk five steps in front of you and then stop. Josh, take a step back. Josh, take another step back. Josh, turn 90 degrees to your left. Josh, take 10 steps and then stop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoopsies. What happened? She told me to take 10 steps, but I ran into something before I could get to the door. So remember, we have to be very clear and very specific in our coding skills. But I think she's doing a great job so far. Keep going, Miss Natalie. Josh, take one step to your left and then stop. Perfect. Take five steps in front of you. One, two, three, four, five. Josh, turn around. Oops, stop. Turn 90 degrees to your right. Josh, face the camera and then stop. Hello, friends. Josh, make a silly face. Perfect. Josh, turn around and face the door. For those of you at home, I have a closet door right here as well, oh. right? Because we are working on being as clear and as specific as possible. Josh, turn around and face the main door to get into the apartment. Open up the door handle to your left. Oh. Open up the bottom handle and turn it down. Take one step back and stop. Open up the door till it reaches the shoe rack and then stop. Ooh, good job. She used another object to make her code more specific. Exit the apartment and stop. Good job. Good. So for those of you at home, you may have seen I did some silly things, right? We are practicing our coding skills, right? A set of codes is really just any code is any time you're giving a clear and specific direction to a robot or to a machine or a computer, take your pick. So I hope you enjoyed today's activity. Uh, keep in mind that Hungry Robot can be used to be as specific as you want, right? Natalie and I are both adults, so she said use 90 degrees. You can also have your younger friend turn left and then just yell stop to get them to go the direction you want. If you have a slightly older friend, you can be using directions. That is a great skill to build. You also don't have to code someone outside of their apartment. You can use this and program someone to make you a sandwich. You can program one of your friends to help make their bed and help out with household chores while practicing your coding skills, right? All of those are wonderful activities and I hope you enjoyed that. 
Again, my name is Josh. This was our early learning live session. For videos like this, you can always check out our Facebook, our Instagram. You can see all of our videos and all of our demonstrations uploaded onto YouTube, or you can find a lot of online learning resources as well as do-it-yourself videos and demos at home at azscience.org. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.